Hi there! In this tutorial you're going to get an introduction to Human Eye Key Animation, a brand new feature with iClone 5. To access the Edit Motion Layer panel, just find it in the Motion section of the Animation tab once your actor is selected. You'll see right now that I have Body Part Animation selected. This means that I can move body parts individually without affecting the rest of the body. I can use the gizmo to move this hand around in any number of directions, and the rest of the arm will move along with it naturally. I can also rotate my screen by holding down the ALT key and right click dragging for a different view. If I select the head and use the E hotkey, I can toggle the rotation gizmo, which you see in action here. I'll also grab the ankle here and move it around to demonstrate the leg movement. However, you'll see that when I try to move the toes, the ankle won't budge. This is because the ankle is pinned for both transform and rotation, which are indicated by the T and R on the ankle selector. If I want to remove the pinning restrictions, I simply need to deselect the pinning options for both move and rotate. You'll see the T and R disappear as I uncheck the boxes. Now when I move the toe, the ankle will move along with it to accommodate the natural body movement. This is what Human IK is all about. With body part movement, larger body parts which are higher up on the limb hierarchy will simulate responsive body part movement when body parts further down are manipulated. So what happens if I switch over to full body movement? Let's take a look. When I grab the hand this time, you'll see that my character's whole body will respond to my movements but the actor's left foot will sink down. This is because I unpin that particular ankle so its movement is no longer restricted. If I highlight that ankle selector and repin it, you can see the difference in the hand movement result now. The result is likewise with the other limbs such as the legs. If I grab this ankle and move it from back to forth, you'll see that my character's body will move along naturally but the other ankle will remain in place as it is currently pinned for movement and rotation. Let's move back up to the upper body now and I'll show you how to move both sides of the body at once. If I select this elbow joint here, I can move it by itself. However, if I select the mirror option at the top, you'll see that both sides will now move simultaneously. I can create a sort of bowing motion like this quite easily. Now I'm quickly going to pin the wrists here into place once again. Once I do that and select the elbow gain for movement, you'll see that the wrists will remain in place as I move around. You can easily adapt this into a sort of sitting motion. If I want to bring my character back into a default pose, I can simply click on the default button. I have my character's motion track open here to show you the difference between the reset and default buttons. You'll see here that I have a default pose clip originally placed in my motion track. I'm going to double click a pose here which will now replace that default track with a block sun track. Now when I go into edit motion layer, I'll just move the character's hand over a little. What happens here is that if I select reset, my character will go back into that pose. However, I can also select default, in which case my character will return to the default pose instead of the one blocking the sun. Anytime you're not happy with the pose you've done, you can also press Ctrl Z to undo your last action. I'm going to create a quick animation here to demonstrate foot contact now. I'll just move the timeline ahead a little, bring my character down to a crouching position, and then return him back up again. You'll see that when I play back, my character will now sink into the ground slightly. I'll zoom in here for a closer look, so you can see the feet actually sink below the horizontal plane. There's an easy way to fix this. Just go into the actor section and toggle on foot contact. Now when I play back, you'll see that the feet will no longer sink beneath the surface. This works on terrain as well, which I'll demonstrate later. Now, I'm working on this singing in the rain pose here. I've got my character posed on this pole, 
and his hand and single foot locked in the right position. If I highlight his chest selector, I can move him in a swaying motion back and forth. And when I reach the limit of the movement, he'll begin to naturally rotate his body to accommodate the pinning. You can see as well that when I toggle the rotate gizmo, that I can rotate him in any number of different ways to further customize movement. So let's do a little animation. I'll move the timeline ahead slightly, move my actor down to the first position of his pose, then ahead once again, and just use the chest selector to rock him upward again. You might notice the hand pinning may sometimes be given less priority to the body movement, so be careful with your movement to make sure you don't create anything too extreme, which can cause hand misplacement. Now when I play back, there's a pretty slow rocking motion. I can make that faster quite easily if I need to. Here I've entered into the motion layer track of my character's timeline, which is where all the edit motion layer changes will show up. The motion layer track contains many subtracks for different body parts, but for this one, we'll just keep it simple. Since I only really created two different keyframes, if I want to make the action faster, I just need to grab the dark black keyframes in the motion layer track and drag them. The other keyframes will follow suit. Now you can see when I play back that the motion is a bit quicker and more energetic. In this next scene, I'm recording a happy walking motion to demonstrate the reach function. When I finish recording, I'll immediately move her forward in the scene to create a decent looking skipping animation. I want the girl to reach up and brush the tree leaves as she's skipping by, so what I'll do first is import in a sphere to act as a dummy object, resize it, and then move it up into the tree. Once that's in position, I'm going to forward to the point where I want my character to start reaching for the object. Then I'll enter into the Edit Motion Layer panel and make sure I'm in the Reach tab. All I need to do is select the character's hand, then the eyedrop tool, and then my dummy prop. You'll see that the character will immediately reach her hand toward the dummy, and when I play back, you'll see a gradual rise. The problem is that at the end, her arm twists back unnaturally. That's because we haven't released it yet. To do this, simply go to the place you wish the hand to return to its normal animation, and then press the release key. You'll see now that when I play back, my character will return her hand to the regular animation rather naturally. If you want to refine the timing of your reach and release, head into the timeline and into the reach track. Here, you'll see two transition lines which represent your reach animations. The little square keys represent the beginning of the blend, while the regular keys represent the final position you indicated. I can drag the square initiate key a little further up to make my character begin her reach a bit quicker. Alternately, I can also move the regular reach key ahead to make the reach occur earlier, or in this case, the reach release. You can fool around with it and adjust it according to your particular needs in any scene. If you want to make your dummy invisible, just go down into the scene manager and toggle the visibility option. You can make it disappear with a simple click like this. As you can see here, I have a table in front of my character, and what I want to do is place her hands flat on the table using the hand contact feature. Normally the way to do this is add the prop to the terrain by right clicking and using the quick menu. This particular prop is unable to do this though, so I'll have to add in a cube prop. Once I've done that and resized it, I can right click on the prop and click add to terrain, which will cause my actor's hands to have natural contact with it. When I select my avatar now, I need to go up to the avatar settings and select hand contact. 
After I do that, I'll go back into the Edit Motion Layer panel and bring my character's hands forward onto the table to see the result. What will happen is that my character's arms will naturally bend and the hands will stay on the surface of the table as long as the movement you make is not too extreme. I'll zoom in a bit and you can see that my character's pose will depend a little bit on how far you position the hands in front of the character. Now let's move on to foot contact. You can see in this scene that when I move my character towards the prop, it will go right through it. I've already assigned it to the terrain, but I still need to turn on foot contact. Once I do that, you can see that my character will suddenly lift up his feet unnaturally. To find out why, I need to check out the properties of my slope. You'll see there's an option called Use Bounding Mesh, which you need to toggle off unless your prop comes loaded with a bounding mesh. Now it will use the prop's natural mesh instead. So this time, you can see as I move my character forward, his feet will travel smoothly over the top of the slope. And here's what it looks like from the other side. And that's about it. Try out the new human IK yourself. It makes any sort of animation so much easier and faster.